If you recall in the previous video, Ipo and Volk just had a sparring session. This Volk, if you remember from the anime, also had a complex boxing journey. He was kicked out of his gym in Japan after losing consecutively to Ipo and Sendo and even contemplated retiring at one point. That was also the time when he helped Ipo as a sparring partner in his fight, even though Volk mentioned he was about to retire. But he returned to boxing and achieved success in various parts of the world. And while all this was happening, he switched divisions. Whereas he and Ipo used to be in the featherweight division, Volgus now moved up to the junior lightweight division. Because of his victories, he had the chance to compete for the IBF World Champion title. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Ipo learned from Itagaki that Vogue has a title match against the junior lightweight IBF champion, and it will take place in Las Vegas next Sunday. We also learned here that this was only announced yesterday when Ipo found out, and it will take place just one week later. The fight seems to be rushed and lacks a long preparation time, and it turns out that the original opponent of the champion was injured, so Vogue will be the stand-in opponent for him. We learned from Kamugawa that after his loss in Japan, he rebounded in the American boxing ring and seemed to bulldoze the boxers there. Volg is so strong. Because of his achievements, he was called the unofficial champion in America. Even though he was ranked number one in their weight division in America, he wasn't given the chance to have a title shot because he is a dangerous opponent and doesn't have solid supporters or fans. So they would rather avoid him because Volg is strong and the match won't generate much revenue. That's why it's only now that he was given a chance for a title shot, because the opponent's camp believes that Volg wouldn't pull off a win for not having enough preparation time and weight management for the upcoming match. The next day, Sendo went to Ipo's place to watch Volg's match on TV. In introducing Volg, he said to himself that his body strengthened in his fight against Ipo. On the other hand, his mentality became more intense in his fight against Sendo, so he will show a stronger and newer version of Volg Zangif. Then, the IBF Junior Lightweight World Champion Mike Elliott was introduced. Turns out he's also a silver medalist in the Olympics and has already defended his world title five times. Wow! Volg's opponent is gonna be formidable. Sendo said that since Volg hadn't prepared for the fight, he would need two rounds to condition his body and gauge a boxer's range. So, the champion would definitely take advantage of this to end the fight quickly. At the sound of the bell, everyone was surprised when Volg quickly charged forward. Sendo also stated that Volg did the right thing because when you fight up close, you don't need to gauge how far your punches will reach. Volg immediately surprised the champion and used his signature move, White Fang, but everyone was shocked when Volg went down and the referee quickly started counting. We then learned that the White Fang was parried and the champion quickly counterattacked with a strong left hook. Senzo and Ipo were surprised because if they were in the champion's position, surely the two would connect and get hit. Ipo and Sendo couldn't believe it, they never thought someone could counter that signature move because when Volg used it against them, their only response was to brace themselves and make sure not to fall because the White Fang is difficult to counter. They began to wonder about the different levels of world-class boxers. Man, this Mike Elliott is strong. Seems like he just brushed off Volg's signature White Fang, didn't he? When Volg stood up, it was clear that he was battered and had a hard time standing straight. Dan said that if they were just to lose like that, they would never get a chance for a title fight again, because his reputation would not recover if he were to lose in such a manner. So he needs to pull himself together and continue the fight. When Volg got up, he showed his fierce wolf side. Even though he was knocked down, he kept moving forward and exchanged punches with the champion. Mike realized why he couldn't move forward to end the fight. Because of Volg's solid left punches, his right hand, which he used to parry the White Fang, was numb from the force of that punch. Volg then unleashed a three left punch combination. The champion quickly retaliated with his own combination, but Volg easily dodged it. After that, the fight seemed to come to a standstill. 
Volk couldn't fully advance because he was still recovering from a powerful left hook. The champion let out a one-two punch. Because of this, Volk was pushed into the ropes and Mike made sure that Volk couldn't escape. When Volk realized he was completely cornered and had no choice, he advanced and a fierce brawl began. But little by little, Volk was at a disadvantage in the exchange of punches. Due to the strength of the champion's right punches, both boxers landed punches simultaneously. But Volk got hit harder because of that punch. And the champion followed it up with a series of punch combos. Because of the champion's onslaught, the referee could be seen contemplating stopping the fight. Suddenly, Volk unleashed the white fan. But the champion parried it again, saying, too bad and followed up with a solid right straight punch. The referee was about to stop the fight, but luckily, Volg was saved by the bell. As the champion walked to his corner, he said that Volg was no longer a wolf because he had broken the wolf's fangs. In Volg's corner, he told his coach that Sendo's punches were stronger than the champion's and if Ipo were in his position, he surely wouldn't give up. So Volg's fighting spirit remained strong. Round 2 began. The champion confidently charged in to end the fight. But when he threw a punch, Volk suddenly released a series of left jabs that surprised the champion. Mike was stunned by the ever-changing direction of Volk's punches. He even said that it was more complicated than the left jabs of the Mexicans. We then learned from Ipo that this was the he end. It works by predicting where the opponents will dodge and flicking the wrist to change the punch's direction. Because of this, the opponents would think these punches are chasing him. After those punches, the champion backed off and his aggression ceased. And so ended round 2. In Volk's corner, he told his coach that he had found his sense of range in the ring. Mike, on the other hand, said that even though the Hien or Swallow is deceptive, he was confident he would remember it after 3 minutes. Round 3 began. Volk was surprised when he saw the entire ring clearly and properly because he had become completely comfortable in the ring and calm. Here, both boxers started to strategize on how to end the fight. The champion advanced and threw a 1-2 punch that almost connected. Volk then retaliated with a combination of normal jabs and the Hien. But Mike parried it and seemed to be gradually getting used to Volk's punches. The exchange of punches continued but neither landed clean hits. The champion started to mix his punches with body blows, but Volg read it and thought to himself that the body blow was just preparation for a killer right straight. The boxing match had become a game of chess due to the intense strategies of both boxers. The fierce brawl in the middle of the ring began again. Both boxers threw various punches, but neither had an advantage and the fight seemed to have reached a stalemate. The audience was silent due to the intensity of the exchange of punches and it seemed like both were just waiting for the perfect opportunity to end the brawl. Then, someone suddenly clapped. It was David Eagle, an Olympic gold medalist and former WBC middleweight champion who was defeated by Takamura. He said that Mike was his close friend because they were teammates in the Olympics. And when Mike started strategizing for the fight, it seemed like everyone was no match for him. So he was pleased with the outcome of the fight between Volg and Mike. He also said that despite many favoring Mike in that fight, he still couldn't dominate Volg. Volg is indeed formidable, isn't he? Just a week of preparation but still so fierce. The situation in the middle of the ring seemed to have become the calm before the storm as both paused and thought of a new strategy to knock the opponent down. After some contemplation, Volk quickly advanced and faked a left to body blow, but Mike saw through this plan. Volk was waiting for his counter left uppercut, so he threw a right straight that Volk managed to dodge. Because of this, they both distanced themselves and thought of their next move. Damn, these two are so intense and so smart. It's as if they're just playing chess in the middle of the ring. And now they are reading each other's next move. Ipo and Sendo put themselves in Volg's shoes and were irritated because if they were in that situation, they wouldn't know what to do. My friends, we are gradually seeing how different world-class fighters are. The fierce brawl in the middle of the ring started again, but it remains evenly matched and neither boxer had the upper hand. Even though Volg used his white fang and hien, the champion had a response. And so ended the breathtaking round 3. 
we learned that Mike had been waiting for his fights with Vogue from the start and was sure he would become a champion right away. But despite his successive victories, he didn't get a chance to get the belt because he was a foreigner. So their situations were reversed and Mike became the champion and Vogue the challenger. In his corner, Vogue said he would give his all in round 4 because he was gradually losing due to lack of stamina because of the quick preparation for the fight. The bell rang and Vogue quickly charged. The chest-like brawl started again and both predicted each other's next moves. The intense exchange of punches continued but Vogue's lack of preparation was gradually showing. Because of this, the champion was slowly gaining the upper hand. When both boxers connected their punches, the bell rang and round 4 ended. Vogue said that when he was still in Japan, he learned from his favorite boxer Ippo. The term Yamato Damashi or Japanese spirit which means facing all challenges with full strength. Round 5 began. Vogue remained a fierce wolf and quickly charged. After Vogue used his Hien, he unleashed his white fan but Mike dodged it, of course, and countered with a powerful body blow. The body blow was so strong that Vogue's mouthpiece came out. It seems like Vogue is being checkmated in the fight as the champion continues to unleash body blows. But Vogue doesn't lose his fighting spirit and remains determined to win. We learn from Ippo that the reason Vogue doesn't give up is because he still has a secret move and it's called Tobami Gaishi which can penetrate the opponent's defense. Dan shouted from the corner to use it now. Vogue started using his secret move, but Mike expected it so he tightened his defense. Ippo said in his mind that the punch is working by turning his fist to the side to more easily penetrate through the middle of the opponent's defense. But the punch fell short and didn't connect to the champion's face as he said, too bad. Suddenly, his face flew back as Vogue's follow-up punch connected and the champion fell down. Here we see the referee cheating because he's helping Mike get up and slowing the count to 10. This is the doing of Mike Elliott's manager who paid the referee. By the way guys, this is also why Vogue and Mike didn't fight right away. It's because of this greedy manager. David Eagle was angered by the ridiculousness he was seeing in the ring and he shouted at Mike to surrender for his honor because the fight should be over but he lost consciousness and didn't know what was happening. Because of this cheating, Ippo shattered the glass table while watching out of annoyance. When the fight continued, they saw a fierce wolf. The intense fight began and they both connected with strong punches. It seemed like a test of face endurance and strength of fighting spirits. When they both connected with a powerful punch, Mike fell and lost consciousness. Mike's manager shouted for the referee to do his job and help him get up. But the coach punched him and said that this has nothing to do with his agreement with the referee. The fight ended there and the new IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Alexander Volkzangief. Pretty cool, huh? That fight was tantalizing. The two boxers were incredibly smart, but even though the referee treated Vogue badly, he still won, which was incredibly intense. If you watched the previous video of Ippo vs Vogue, we also realize how much of a monster of a boxer our protagonist Ippo has become. Imagine, Vogue is this strong but Ippo dominated him even without proper training, with jet lag and still wearing trousers. The possibilities for what could happen next are just so exciting. Let's look forward to that together, okay? So don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated with the upcoming intense fights. See you next time, guys.